Whoa! <laughs> that was almost video over. That was almost curtains. <laughs> How difficult is it to build a gaming PC? I have absolutely no idea. Have I paid you to pretend that you've never built a gaming PC before? Or are we being serious? We are being serious. I'm a bit nervous. Normally you make me feel comfortable. You've made me feel incredibly uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, that's what we're going for on this <laughs> yeah. video. I know kind of what these things are. Do you know what this is? Um, fans. Graphics card. I've I can see it written on, on the back. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get into the world of gaming PCs, but I've just never, never had the the, com the confidence. You've come to an expert. I've come man. to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to build a super fast gaming PC that is perfect for the latest titles. We're going to show you all of the parts that are featured, and of course, we're going to show you some gameplay so you know exactly how this thing performs. Future markers here, by the way. I completely forgot to say this video is sponsored by ASUS. We just got too excited. We did. We did. We're getting a carry away with all of the fun. I guess I probably should give you some background that here we have Ryan and he is almost my childhood, I was gonna say sweetheart then, my childhood friend. You lived a few doors up the road, didn't you? God, the, the amount of arguments we've had over, over James Bond Gold and I. How many times did I go home and storm off and oh. then your mum had to come and uh, sort everything out? Lots of, lots of history here. This is a motherboard. Have you have you seen one of these before? Yes, I have seen one of these before. The exact model is the Tough Gaming Z690 Plus Wi-Fi D4. So this is a Z690 motherboard. These are actually brand new. So you have AMD and you have Intel and they make the CPUs or the processors. It's almost like the brain of your computer. And this is almost what it sits upon. Is this, is this ready to go as it is? Or like when you plug, is this just plug in? Everything really plugs into the motherboard. So at the moment, this here is where the CPU will go, which is the processor. Yeah. Our solid state drives, but they go in these slots here. You can use multiple drives. This is what your Windows install goes on. This is where your games go. So Warzone, that's always taking up 100 gig. That's where it will live. Do you know what these things are for? I've seen you plug things into these before. I have done that. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what they are. So this is where your memory or your RAM will go. So you're typically gonna use maybe eight, 16 or 32 gigabytes. So all of your programs will go in memory. This is where that memory goes essentially. And do you know what these things are at the back? Yes, yeah, these are the bits I'm aware of. You've used a USB before. I've used a USB before. Inside the box, you also get a few other accessories and you might need these depending on what you're going to be building. So these things are SATA cables and you don't actually probably need these anymore. These are for two and a half inch drives. I don't know if you've ever taken like a PlayStation 3 or 4 apart and you've taken like a, a drive out if you swapped drives about before. Nope. <laughs> I am really a novice. And then we also have your manual and genuinely this is probably the most important manual you'll ever read in your life other than maybe your boiler manual. <laughs> but if you get into any issues then this is probably a good place to look like if you get an okay. error code or something okay. if it doesn't start. It's my lifeline. Apex. Lifeline. Apex? Apex. I play Apex. I thought you were the gamer. That's a very loose connection. <laughs> You know what else will be a loose connection? You're plugging in. The first thing that we're going to do is actually build our PC on the box itself, not putting it straight in the case. And the reason we do this is because you have a lot more lights, so you can actually see what you're doing and you don't really want to be reaching into a case and sort of... Okay. You want to have good access to all of the components essentially. Okay. If you turn that round to face the camera, mm -hmm. that's too far. You never filmed a PC-centric video before? Now this is the bit that you need to be really careful with because this bit is very delicate. This is the brand new 12600K CPU from Intel. I know exactly where this goes. In there. No, it doesn't. No, it does <laughs> So if you remove that from the box. How delicate do I need to be? Uh, as soon as you take it out of the protective sort of container, very. So open it up for me and yeah. then just gently place the whole thing down on the desk. Now we do need to get this installed. So you see there's this little lever here, this little retention mm -hmm. arm it's called. So if you press that down for me and then push it towards me, there we go. Mm -hmm. So if you lift the whole thing up from the top. From the top here. Yep, and then drop that down. Okay. Now you probably notice that there are a load of gold pins. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that you never touch under any circumstances because you will genuinely break the whole motherboard. You'll notice on the top, they've put it on the CPU now, but there is actually an arrow. You should notice that there is actually a little arrow on the socket as well. Mm. So you line those up and then you just drop it down with no force whatsoever. So just drop it into position. Yeah. So that arrow should face that down, corner. Down in the corner there. Yeah. Okay. And then we are... There you go. In. And you see now 
that shouldn't wiggle about. Okay. And it's definitely locked into place. Now that that's in place, you're essentially gonna have to do the reverse of what you did to open it up, and you're gonna have to close it by lowering down that socket. Okay. Or the retention arm. Like so. Yeah, they've changed it a little bit, and you're gonna have to push it down now until that piece comes off. If you, you can remove that cover now. Oh, this cover, oh, so this actually, ah, so that's, uh, that's why it says remove on it. So that's a protective cover so that you don't damage the socket when you're handling the motherboard. Show the lovely people at home what you've done. Wow. Mummy can put it on the fridge. <laughs> Old Debbie. Old Debbie, <laughs> Debbie girl. Classic name. So this bit, I think a child could do. This is <laughs> the RAM. You're right at home. <laughs> so this is some Viper RGB from Patriot, which means it's got bright, flashy lights on it. This is actually a really fast kit. It runs at 4,133 megahertz. Sounds fast. <laughs> <laughs> it actually gets even more complicated as well because you have to enable an XMP profile to get that speed. Do you know what XMP stands for? Every word begin with X has suddenly gone out of my mind. Well, this is the problem because it actually stands for extreme. Extreme memory profile. Ah, uh, these are the bits that click into the, the bits I knew things clicked into. Now what I want you to do for me now is just put the RAM in the motherboard and I'm not gonna tell you which slots because I just wanna sort of see what the natural instinct would be. Okay. Where does your RAM go? The way that they open up, by the way, is just with these clips at the top and then when you push it down, those will automatically close. So I would naturally probably line the wording up with the sort of orientation of this wording, and then left to right, so I would put in here. So you've got 50-50 right there because you've actually managed to line up the channel on the RAM. If you turn it around the other way, it won't actually fit in. Yeah, oh, okay, so it's off-centered. But I notice you're going for the black RAM slots. So essentially we want to use these gray ones and we don't actually put them next to each other because the way that the RAM works is that you have these things called channels. You have two different channels in order to get the full speed. So if you just drop that in for me in the gray slots this time. Drop it in? Yeah, it should just slide in. There you go, that's half of it. <laughs> there you go. You need, to, you need to go down the gym, boy. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that was almost video over. That was almost curtains. <laughs> you just push it in, and when that clip closes up, you know it's in properly. There you go, so you've heard the click. Yeah, so you can just double check it by giving it a push. But yeah, you've done a good job there. Oh, you're tidying up, sorry. I don't, oh. I don't do that on this channel. Okay. What I do... Leave that nice and messy over there, then. <laughs> it's a problem for Ron. <laughs> later on. Ah, uh, you've used that joke before. So we've got our CPU installed and our RAM. If you wanted to upgrade to say 32 gigabytes of RAM, essentially double what you've got, then you just populate those other two slots. So it gives you some flexibility in the future. But now it's time to install our SSD. Do you remember where you're going to put it? Um, it was here, wasn't it? So that's where the graphics card goes. But then you also have these dedicated M.2 SSD slots so that you can put some storage directly onto the motherboard and you don't need to worry about wires or anything. Okay, so it goes behind that little guard. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Other than, we've also got a Patriot Viper RGB SSD. This is my rather comical screwdriver that everyone sort of always comments on. They say it's too long, but I say you can never have it too long. <laughs> One is for general purpose, like for the motherboard, for actually putting fans and things in. Mm -hmm. But when we're using M.2 SSDs, it's a little bit smaller, so you need a smaller size Phillips crosshead. If you just unscrew it as you're sort of pulling it pulling up. Pulling it out, should, there we there go, we that's go. how we do it. So normally with a heatsink, you'll find that you have this little protective film. You'd want to take this off, and then your SSD would sit on this little pad and that would mean that all of the heat from the SSD would transfer into this mm -hmm. and then your fans would dissipate it throughout basically. But because we're using a fancy little RGB SSD, it has its own heat sink so we won't need that. So you'll see that there's this little slot here. This is where the SSD goes into. So if you just line that up for me, it's gonna be upside down, which is a little bit annoying, but we're just gonna go with it. There you go. And then push that down. But this is what your computer will look like. Everything on the motherboard we need is actually installed now, which is pretty good, no? That was a lot easier than I was expecting. Well, I say easier, a lot less components than I was expecting. Now should come the most exciting bit really for you because this is what your computer is actually gonna look like. This is your case or your chassis. I've picked this out for you. This was supplied by Overclockers UK. 
This is from a company called Colink. So essentially, yes, this is the bit that looks the most like a computer. True story, I once got really excited on an Amazon listing and I saw there was a case and I was like, there's a full computer for 80 quid and then realized that it was just a chassis. <laughs> I was very young though, so you know, cut me some slack, please. Yeah. We're gonna put the case to one side and you can actually now open this up. So there are four screws yeah. on the side panel. So if you take those out for me, the whole thing should now come off. Yeah. We are in. My advice would be not to drop back, that will break. Change places. You don't watch Futurama, do you? No. I'll unscrew the back as well so you can get a proper, proper look at this. You can see inside the beast. This is the back, so you can put some of those SSDs here if you want, the two and a half inch ones we were talking about earlier. Mm. Our power supply will go in here and then we've got a few different cables and these will plug into the motherboard. Well then, this is the side that the motherboard will actually go in. So you have these little things called standoffs. These actually protect the motherboard from touching the metal of the case. So here are your screws that you're going to need. So if you take those out for me, we can actually now get this motherboard inside the case. All right, so I've got different screws. Do I keep them separate? So you have a few different screws depending on what the use of it is, essentially. Your power supply will have different screws to the ones that you'll put uh, in the case to actually tie the motherboard into place. We should need some gold ones, if you can get those out for me. Those are the standoffs. So if you look at the motherboard itself, you will see that you have these little holes here. Mm -hmm. You see they've got this little silver ring around them, and then you've got one in the middle. Yeah. These have got to line up with the case, so that when you drop them in, that's what you use to secure it all down. Are they the same with every motherboard or is it? They're in the same place, depending on the size. Okay. This is what we call an ATX motherboard, so it's fairly big. Yeah. But if you get a smaller size one, it will have a slightly different amount of holes. And if you go for a micro ATX, they're in a slightly different location. So if you pick up the case for me and then lay it down flat on the table, some companies will actually give you a little tool to get those in really nice and tight, but certainly they have not done that. Now we're ready to drop this into place. Okay. So if you pick this up and then you gently lay that over the standoffs, until it sort of rests in place. We can then grab one of our screws, and if you get the middle screw in, the rest should then sort of self line up a little bit. How tight? I would say not that tight, quite loose. And then these holes, you can now just move the motherboard just to get that lined up. Well, people laugh, but the, the lengthy screwdriver is useful. It's very useful. Show the, the lovely people at home your good work. There we go. We can actually install the CPU cooler now if you're up for it. I am up for it. Do you want me to pick out which one I think it is? Yeah. Hang on, it's down here. Oh, he's found it. It was a trick question. <laughs> got it. Look at that. So this is an Asus Tough liquid cooler. And this one actually goes for a slightly different design because you've got the Tough logo all over it, which I think looks pretty smart. I mean, do you understand why we need a CPU cooler? That's yes. probably a good question. I imagine it overheats or is prone to overheating. So cooling your equipment, making sure that it doesn't essentially burn out. Yeah, essentially the more powerful the CPU, the more power it uses, the more heat it generates. And so you need to dissipate that heat and get it away. And the better CPU coolers will not only be more powerful, but they'll actually be quieter as well. I should say that Asus have also provided us with an Intel 1700 bracket for this. This is a new motherboard, LGA 1700 is the name of the socket, which means it does have slightly different like mounting hardware, which is why we need this. But it's quite cool because the motherboard does actually also let you use LGA 1200. So basically if you're using an older cooler, you're upgrading it you actually still might be able to use it with this motherboard. Oh, this is the radiator, you put fans on here, and all of the heat goes from the CPU in one of these tubes and then gets dissipated out and then obviously brings that cooler liquid back to the CPU and then it repeats. You can hear there's water already in it, so it comes pre-watered. Pre-watered, yeah, you don't need to worry about adding your own. That's a custom loop if you do that yourself. You'll see that our pump head is gonna go on the CPU here and we're going to have this at the top. Then we can either use the fans as an exhaust to blow air upwards and out the chassis, or you could do it the opposite. But heat naturally rises, so you tend to use this as an exhaust. Yeah. And I assume important to make sure that the wires... Yep, yeah, exactly. You wanna make sure that the wires are gonna be at the back, because if they're here, it's ugly, and you just yeah. end up doing it all over again. If you're ever in any doubt, look, you can just sort of pretend that you've got the fans in. See that I've put them wrong way round and then fix it before you make the mistake. Then in our bag of goodies, you should find a load of screws. You get washers so that when you attach this to the case, you have a little bit more leverage, but when we're just screwing the fans in, you don't need to worry about those, just these long screws. And you feed them through. Oh no, what's happened? Have you taken the plastic off or has that fallen? 
I have now touched the thermal paste. And this is what essentially gets rid of all of the air gaps between the block and then the CPU itself. I love that, you're trying to blame it on me. Well, it is your fault, 100%. <laughs> Once we take this little dust filter off, then that should line up with some holes along the top. I'll put a screw in. I'll tell you what my family do now, actually, is when someone's being really boring, then we interrupt them and we say, boring story of the week. Bit of Harry, was that Harry Hill? That was Harry Hill, yeah. We usually end up saying that to my mum. Has your mum got more fun? My mum is a gem. <laughs> Gem squash or gem lettuce? Gem lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> That's half of it done. The next thing, of course, is the other half, which is this bit that we've already sort of uh, ruined. I, I just like to say the way, the way you said we yeah. in that. We ruined Sorry, it. Sorry, the way he ruined it. <laughs> so we need to grab our mounting hardware next and our back plate. We have this cutout here that you yes. mentioned earlier. Yeah. This goes in that hole. Sorry guys, the case hasn't been very well designed. The cutout isn't big enough. We do now need to actually take the motherboard out a little bit. This is why it's actually quite a good idea to put that back plate on before you put the motherboard in the case because you never know if this is gonna happen or not. In we go. Is that better now? That is much better. If you would like to get me that bag of LGA 1700 screws. So these now need to screw into the other side of the bracket that we've just put in. So this is what holds it into place and then the cooler will go on that and then we'll then use some thumb screws to fix it all down. Now that should just quite literally press on top. A good trick is if you do the two diagonals and then you can tighten them up a little bit. You know at some point you're gonna to have to explain to everyone at home when I quote almost killed you but that's absolute rubbish. Okay so we're playing a good old-fashioned um, game of Kirby. Americans might not know what that is. Throw a ball from one side of a row to the other, trying to hit the curb. We've decided to play just next to this hornet's nest, which is a, it's a great idea. So not only is the road, there's also an added element of danger with the hornets. Um, I was aware that these hornets were there. I should say that he was like a little girl. He hated any wasps. Oh, he would be, oh, you'd be out of it. Was, I still am. Marcus screams, a hornet! Yeah, because there was one flying around his head. If it's behind you, you're not gonna do a, do a 90 and run right or left, you run forward. There was a car coming. And he runs straight into the road straight in front of the car, the car, and then he blames me for almost getting hit by a car when a woman wound a window down and was like, what are you kids doing? <laughs> mm. Now that that's on, we do need to give it a little bit of power so it can actually do anything. You see there's this little like cable dangling down here. Mm -hmm. So essentially every fan in your system you need to plug in so that it does something. You see that there are two there, one called CPU fan and one CPU optional or pump. And then you also see that you have this RGB cable. This plugs in right here at the top. These cables are now poking through and you plug them together and then essentially both of your CPU fans will then be controlled with one single header. And then we can plug this in to that grey CPU port. You'll probably notice that it looks a little bit bare at this side of the case. Mm -hmm. There's no fans. So what we're going to do is add some more. We've got some here from Antec. These are the Prism 120 ARGB and then we can just screw it in from the back. Now that the fans are in, you can plug in the fan speed connections. You'll see you've got some down the bottom. We've already plugged a couple in, but there's a fan header there that I think says chassis fan two on it. Any idea what these are for? They're connected to the case, that's the clue. Okay, so it's your, it's your on the switches, your, off, uh, your, your USBs. Your... Exactly, yeah. Right. So it gets every button on the case essentially to work. And these all plug into the motherboard and mainly down the bottom. This one is your USB Three. These smaller cables are things that say power switch, reset switch, HD, LED, and then you've got USB 2.0 and HD audio that gets the front panel to actually give you some audio when you plug your headphones in. It's a USB. So this one plugs in to this port here. Now these are the really fiddly ones, the power switch and the reset switch. One more, this is the... HD LED, so that's the bottom left. Really starting to come together now. Are you proud of yourself? You've done that. Yes, yeah, <laughs> with a little assistance. Power supply. That was heavy. <laughs> that was heavier than expected. So this is from Corsair. This is a TX650M. M stands for modular. It is 80 plus gold rated. But the main thing really you need to bear in mind is how much power it can actually output. So this is a 650 watt power supply, which should be enough for the system that we're building with a fair bit of ease. But if you are doing something with more meat or I suppose less, then obviously you'd buy an appropriate wattage because the higher the number, the more expensive it's gonna cost you. So you just lay this in there like so. Do they line up with the holes okay? Yeah, done a good job of that. So if I were you, I would start with the CPU cable. That goes at this hole at the top. Okay. 
And then I see you've discovered the Molex connector. And these are a bit of a pig, I'll be honest, to actually plug in, but give it a go. You need to squeeze it open when you're pushing it in and line it up. It requires quite a lot of force, this. So the whole thing doesn't need to be like neat, neat. You just need to be able to close the side panel, but it always helps to have a nice, uh, a nice working space. Now this is the bit that you've got to handle with a lot of respect because GPU shortages, this is quite literally like gold dust. So this is a really powerful GPU. So you've got two different companies pretty much, Team Red, which is AMD, and Team Green, which is Nvidia. I think this card is beautiful. It's one of my favorite GPUs, actually. This is the Tough Gaming Edition. So of course it is by ASUS, but it's a beautiful bit of kit. So you see on the back of this, this is gonna poke through to the end. Yeah. We essentially need to allow that to happen. So if you remove these two here, so if you would like to line that up with the slot, at the moment the card is upside down. That's the one. Like this. Perfect. Push that in. If it doesn't line up properly, you can almost push the case a bit. Does that help? Yeah. We need to plug in all of our power cables. So this is our CPU. Do you think you could plug that in for me at the top? Of course. So there's an eight pin and that just hooks over the top. That very large ATX, remember, that's dangling down, that big one? Yeah. That needs to go in, well, the appropriately large size hole. And then finally, you've just got your PCIe power connections that go at the top of the card here. That, assuming it works, is it. You have genuinely just built a gaming PC. What do you think? I think, yeah, I think it looks great. How would you say it went in terms of difficulty? Because I think having a case like this with the two chambers really is a good idea for first time builders because yeah. it just gives you so much more space. It's confusing knowing all the different um, parts and pieces, but in the grand scheme of things, I always thought it was going to be much more complex than that. Tell the person watching at home that hasn't built a computer yet, whether they can do it. Yeah, it, you, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. Would you have been able to do it if I wasn't there? With the help of the uh, probably that, that life saving manual, then yeah. What was more confusing than you expected? Uh, the names of things. Names of things. Yeah, I've never, I've never heard the names of half of those components mm. that we put in. When you start going into the more complex, the different connections and the different cables, then it gets a little bit harder. But that it, nothing further than looking at a manual would, mm. would, would solve. Power cable in. And then where do you put the display port? Up here, next to the big D. We're on, we're in. Unfortunately, we're in. you've made the schoolboy error. That's why I let you do it. What do you think you've done wrong there? I've got no idea. Because you put a graphics card in, you need a plug yes. into that. So what you would probably find is that if you power that computer on, you wouldn't get an output. Because as soon as you plug a graphics card in, these get disabled. Push the button. RGB, look at that. We're on, that actually looks really good. Oh, oh. Hey. There you go. You have genuinely built your first gaming computer. That's awesome. It's that a good is, feeling, isn't great. it? great. No, that is really cool. Like you did that. And then the final thing that you're going to need is this. Any idea why? Uh, assuming, because we need to upload Windows. <laughs> upload? So we're doing Windows 11 here, because this is Alder Lake, and you get best performance in Windows 11. That's it. Like genuinely, that is it. You have now built a gaming computer. It's just installing Windows, and then it is ready to play some games on. Can I get you to look at the camera, sound really excited and say, here we are then. Here we are then. Oh, that's very loud. I can get your controller if you want, but they would not be very happy with you. And then we've got our frame rate up there at the top. So you're currently running at around about 100 FPS at 4K, but this is a 60 Hertz monitor. So if you're playing on a more high refresh rate one, then you'd get even higher frame rate and it would feel even better, a lot smoother. Like I say, console gaming is what I'm used to. And I can already tell you it's much smoother. Sharper. Sharper, crisper. I've turned it down to 1440p, but you've got to win this. The frame rate is now 160. You did it! Look, turn around, look, look at that face, he loves it. This is Battlefield 2042, this is the intro sequence. So this is multiplayer, but it is with bots. Again, running at 4K max settings. Ready? Oh, oh, Ready? oh. See ya. There you go, you killed a bot. We've now turned it down to 1440p to try and increase our frame rate because as the resolution increases, the more demand gets put on the system, then obviously the lower the frame rate will be. But now we've got around about, what's that? 90 FPS? Are you ready for some Apex Legends, baby? Yes, I am. Go on, it's all over to you now. Walk us through the frame rate, what you're feeling, what we're getting. As with the others, it's good. It's better than <laughs> I know. It's better than I'm used to. We're looking at an, an amazing 
131 frames with a, <laughs> I don't know what any of the other numbers mean. I'm currently running down a hill yeah, and it looks good. good and it feels good. See, oh, you're sweating, aren't you? Look, you're sweating on the keys. Okay, my friend, that is it. What do you think? I am excited to say the least, to get myself going um, with the game in PC. And what in particular about the system do you like? What would you want when we build yourself one? I like the size of it. I like the colours, the, the RGB. I think that's a, an, an element that I would like to keep. And then also the black theme. Performance and stuff. I mean, this graphics card, mm -hmm. assuming you could get it for the normal price, you'd be looking at around about six, 700 quid for that. So it's not a, uh, it's not a cheap bit of kit. But I tell you what, I did have a little chat with Asus and we're going to let you keep the case. Mm -hmm. We're going to let you keep the fans. Amazing. Going to let you keep the motherboard, the graphics card and everything. Really? That is... <laughs> I'm over the moon with that. I'm sorry I almost killed you all those years ago. <laughs> yeah. I, no, that's, that's made up for it. More than made, made up for it. it. Genuinely, this is, this is I'm your... I'm actually over the moon with that. Thank you, mate. Your new PC. I'm actually over the moon. Sorry, I'm, I literally, I'm, I'm buzzing. Yeah. <laughs> I was not expecting you that. Just... Thank you so much for watching. Yeah. I hope this has been useful. If you want to build something like this yourself, then check out all of the components down in the description below when you can learn a little bit more and things like current pricing. Obviously, this is YouTube. You have to ask everyone to like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> Smash that like button. Smash the like button. Thank you guys so much for watching. A massive thank you to Asus for actually making this possible. And we'll see you in the next one.